Good morning, boys and girls. I'm your teacher today, Mrs. Aggie Duvall, and I want to welcome you to the last month of the year and the first Sunday in December in our Sunday school class. Before we begin our lesson, let's have prayer. We'll say the Lord's Prayer. We'll bow our heads, right? Uh, core gentry. May we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation and forgive us for all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Corey. You have had many lessons talk to you virtually since the pandemic, and I know that you learned a lot. So let's review the Bible. Now the Bible is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. How many books are in the Old Testament? Did you say 39? Very good. How many books are in the New Testament? Did you say 27? Good. There are how many books in the Bible? 66. What is the first book of the Old Testament? Did you say Genesis? Very good. What is the first book of the New Testament? Matthew. Very good. Now our lesson today is from the New Testament. Includes the books Hebrew and Matthew. Our key verse is, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in the last days, he has spoken to us by his son, his heavenly son. Because in the Old Testament, Christ was not yet born. The title of our lesson is the heir of a promise. And you know, a promise is assurance that you would do a particular thing. You will have four words used in our lesson. The first word is ancestors. How many of you know that word? Have you heard that word before? Well, this word describes a family member or members who lived long ago, and it's older than the person you are related to. I have a picture of my grandmother. She's my great-grandmother, rather, and if she had lived today, she would be 150 years old, and she was of a different generation. My children are her descendants. She would be that great-great-great-great-great-grandmother. So those are my children, uh, ancestors. The new, next word is heir. And that is a person receiving something from an ancestor. In our lesson today, Jesus is God's heirs. God gave him the power that he had to heal the sick, raise the dead, and preach and teach about God. Prophet is a person regarded to inspire teacher or proclaimer of God. And today, that could be the pastors, the ministers. Lastly, generations means all the people born and living at about the same time. Before we begin reading this lesson, how many of you knew that Jesus had brothers, sisters, grandparents? The reason that he did was because his earthly parents were Mary and Joseph. And we would celebrate his birthday on Christmas Day. And his heavenly father was God. And as I said before, walking as an earthly, he walked on earth, healing the sick, walking on water, teaching and saving sinners, helping them to live a pure and righteous life. The, sin, the descendants of Jesus, well, my, my children are the descendants of my uh, great-grandmother, uh, the Israelites were God's chosen people. And he promised them if they lived a righteous life that they could have land and a good life. And of course, they believed in God, but some were tempted into doing evil and sinning, not following the Ten Commandments. This is also include ancestors of Jesus. Before he came to earth as a human being, God the Son was with the Father. No one created him. He has always existed. God created the first people. Ooh. Ooh. Adam and Eve. But they did not obey mm. him. 
All along, God planned to send his son to earth to save people from sin. At just the right time, Jesus came to earth as a baby. He was born to Mary, the wife of Joseph. Jesus is different than any other baby who was ever born because he is fully God and fully human. Like all people on earth, Jesus' family had a history, a family tree. Jesus had parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents, back and back for many generations. Jesus was born into the family of Abraham and the family of King David. Abraham had a son named Isaac. When Isaac had a family, one of his sons was named Jacob. Jacob was part of Jesus' family. Years later, a man named Solomon was born into Jesus' family tree. He married Rahab, who hid the Israelite spies when they came to Jericho. Rahab had a baby named Boaz. Oh. Boaz was a farmer, and he married Ruth. Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed. Obed's son was Jesse. Jesse had many sons. His youngest was David. David was just a boy when he was chosen to be Israel's king. King David liked to write. He wrote songs called Psalms, and some of them were about the time when Jesus would come to earth. Other people in Jesus' family were kings too. David's son Solomon was a king. King Jehoshaphat was part of Jesus' family, and so was Uzziah, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Josiah. God's people returned home from exile in Babylon. Then, Sha'alatel was born. His son was Zerubbabel. Later, Matthan came along. Matthan's son was named Jacob, and Jacob's son was named Joseph. Joseph is the man who married Jesus' mother, Mary. Joseph raised Jesus as his own son. Jesus was truly God's son, the Messiah. Jesus came to earth as a human. Jesus had earthly parents, Mary and Joseph, but his true father is God. Through Jesus, God kept his promises to Abraham and David. Jesus saves people from their sins and adopts them into God's family. The story tells us that God loves us and wants people to live right. Okay, the lesson for today. The heir of promise, taken from Matthew, first chapter, the first and sixth verse, 16 to the 17, and Hebrews, first through the first and the fifth verses. Abraham was Jesus' great ancestor. Abraham was the lineage 42 generations before Jesus. Jesus' ancestors include Jacob, Isaac, Boaz, Obed, Jesse, and David. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many generations. God allowed Mary, a virgin, to be Jesus' mother and Joseph to be Jesus' father. Until Jesus' birth, God spoke to humans through other men called prophets. And after Jesus' birth, God spoke through, through Jesus only. Before Jesus, man kept sinning and disobeying God. God kept, got tired of punishing generations of people, so he decided to make a permanent sacrifice. He chose Jesus as that permanent sacrifice. Jesus took the punishment and responsibility for everyone's sin. He was righteous, pure, and ever and even greater than all angels, but he was sacrificed for all generations. Jesus fulfilled the promise made to Abraham and became the heir to God's kingdom. After his crucifixion, Jesus returned to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. God was proud of him and appointed him over everything, including the angels. God made the universe through Jesus. Jesus represents God's goodness, looking and being exactly like God. God gave Jesus power to speak as God. Jesus was appointed as the one to inherit all things from God. This title was not given to any angel, nor did God tell any angel that he was their father. God called only Jesus to be his heir of Abraham's promise.
before Jesus, God enacted the punishment, but he, but he sent Jesus to save people and encourage them to be righteous. Repent and sin no more, and you can ask Jesus for forgiveness. You remember that God gave Jesus the power to speak for him. He was God's heir. He was sent to earth to save people from their sin as the heavenly son of God and the earthly son of Joseph and Mary. Great is your reward in heaven if you live a righteous life. This is a promise because we're all heirs when we follow God's word. These are some points that in our story to see whether or not you really understand what I'm talking about, about Jesus and how he came to be born. Number one, Jesus was the earthly son of Joseph and Mary. Is that true or false? Okay, true, good. Jesus' ancestors are found in the Old Testament. Is that true or false? That's true. All of Jesus' ancestors were righteous and never sinned. That's false because they had many men in that David and uh, Solomon who was wise, but in the end he was tempted. God gave Jesus power to speak as God. True. That is true, okay? Everyone has ancestors. Is that true or false? That is true, okay? In the end, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It is God's love for us from the Old Testament to today that Christ was born. During this Christmas season, we thank God for Jesus, for his birth and God's love. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season and God is love and we all are heirs of his love. Stay safe and I do hope to see you soon. We will be dismissed by Case and Hall and afterwards we will have a song about Father Abraham, Jesus' great ancestor who had many sons. Sing along with this favorite and familiar action song. Please bow your heads for the closing prayer. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. Yeah.